Welcome to the Night Sky. I'm Michael Martin, and through this monthly series, I'm going to walk you through the best objects and events that you can get out and see in the night sky throughout the entire year. Whether you're a casual fan of space or have years of experience in amateur astronomy, please like this video and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. Also, be sure to let me know what questions you have and what you're able to get out and see in the comments section below. Now, sadly for the month of June, there are no major meteor showers for us to go out and look at. So let's jump straight to our closest neighbor, the moon. After a busy May with the total lunar eclipse, Things quiet down a good bit this month, but that doesn't mean that there still aren't some great opportunities to get out and see the moon with the naked eye, a pair of binoculars, or a telescope. We begin the month with the first quarter phase, which is going to be on June 7th. And it's during this time that I encourage you to go out and study the surface of the moon after sunset with a pair of binoculars or a telescope. On the night of June 14th, the full moon rises at sunset and shines down on us for the entire night. The last quarter moon follows on June 20th, and the new moon of the month hits on June 28th. If you want to get some pictures of the moon, I would suggest you pick up a cell phone adapter like this one. You can connect it to your telescope and your cell phone to get some incredible pictures and video of the lunar surface and even live stream what you're seeing from your telescope to friends and family. If you're able to get out and take any pictures or video of the lunar surface or anything else in the nighttime sky, please follow me over at Instagram and share what you found by tagging me at Late Night Astronomy. I would love to see what you're taking pictures of in the nighttime sky. As we move on to the planets of our solar system, we're going to be spending the entirety of this month in the early morning sky, looking especially at some particularly impressive views of the planets right before sunrise in the second half of the month. But let's begin this month as we always do with the closest planet to the sun, Mercury which begins the month close to the sun and then pokes above the horizon by the middle and end of the month. Venus shines bright in the east as it passes by Uranus on June 12th and the moon on June 26th. As we move the clock from 5.30 to 4.30 in the early morning sky, Mars becomes a more attainable target for telescopes as we look forward to our close approach to it later this year, with it making a close pass to the moon on June 22nd. The largest planet Jupiter rises higher into the sky as the month goes on and makes a close approach to the moon on June 21st. The ringed planet Saturn is making its way to becoming an evening target, but best views are still in the southeast as it rises higher throughout the month. Uranus remains too close to the sun for any practical viewing, and Neptune finds itself sandwiched between Jupiter and Saturn as it sails through the sky this month. My solar system observing challenge for you this month is to go outside in the early morning and see how many of the planets you can spot just before sunrise. Technically, all seven will be there, but Mercury being low to the horizon and Uranus and Neptune being dim are going to make that a difficult challenge. Let me know in the comments section below how many you were able to spot and share any pictures that you were able to take with me over on Instagram. As we leave the solar system behind, let's go outside and take a look at the best constellations and deep sky objects that you can go out and enjoy for the month of June. Now let's begin with the best and brightest constellations that make up the sky this month. If you go outside, you're going to be able to see and find and study with the naked eye the following spring constellations, beginning with Ursa Major. Butes, Leo, Cancer, Virgo, 
and Hydra. Within these constellations are some of the best deep sky objects that the night sky has to offer. Now these are going to require in most cases binoculars and more than likely a telescope, especially if you live under light polluted skies and are looking for some faint fuzzy dim galaxies. To find the best deep sky objects this month, go outside around 10 p.m. and face towards the south. Look up until you come across the constellation Virgo and a collection of targets that literally has hundreds of galaxies all crammed into one region of space that we call the Virgo Cluster. Let's begin in the lower region of Virgo by studying the brightest galaxy in it, M49. Let's then move up to Virgo A, M87, another impressive galaxy that is pretty close to the center of this galaxy cluster. Be sure your eyes are properly adapted to the dark and spend your time looking for more and more faint fuzzy galaxies popping into the field of view as you scan this part of the night sky. A favorite of mine to image is the Coma Pinwheel Galaxy, whose beautiful blue spiral structure will show up in your astrophotography. As we move back down into the core of Virgo, we come across an incredible view through your telescope or the lens of your camera, Markarian's chain. M84 and M86 make up the brightest part of this intergalactic chain of galaxies. The beauty of this particular structure and the immensity of the hundreds of galaxies that make up the Virgo cluster is why I keep coming back to this part of the sky to observe and image year after year. I've got a detailed video on several more deep sky objects in the spring sky that you can view and image, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. Those are just some of the best objects and events that you can get out and see in the nighttime sky for the month of June. If there's anything I left off this list or any experiences out observing or imaging that you'd like to share with others, please let us know about those things in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.